Hello and welcome back to Rara Adventures. Hope we are all well. So today we are out and about visiting, but there's a little bit of a twist as I've not long come out of surgery. So we will be relying on the mobility scooter a lot as I can't walk too far. And you may notice that I've got a bit of a lisp at the minute. Um, when I went into surgery, they caught my tongue, so half my tongue is quite numb. So I'm gonna give you a heads up on that. So please bear with me. So today we are out and about visiting Stansted Park to share with you what to expect whilst visiting. If you've only just joined and would like to help support Rara's Ventures, please hit that subscribe button as that will really help support what we are doing. So there's quite a lot here to see and do. Um, and we're hoping that we'll get time to go around it all. But obviously, like I've just explained, I've just come out of surgery a, week, a couple of weeks ago. So we'll see how things go. Also, um, we're not 100% sure if everything's over, open because of COVID or not. So we'll do as much as we are able. Before we begin, I would like to share a little bit of information about Stansted Park Estate, which I have quoted from their website to give you the right information. So, nestled between Chichester and Portsmouth, and part of the South Downs Park, Stansted Park stands at 1,800 acres of extraordinary landscape parkland and ancient forest. I told you my tongue was playing up, I told you. So let's carry on. The earliest records of people on the estate date back to medieval times when the, the grounds were used for hunting and royalty visiting the park. King Henry II, Richard the Lionheart and the King John have all been known to have visited the forest. In 1688, the first house was built on the present site for Lord Lumbry. Lumbry. The estate changed hands and appearance over the centuries. All bought and sold by many colourful characters including Richard Barwell, the Indian Nabob and the famous jurist converter Lewis Way. A generous London wine merchant by the name of Charles Dixon and the Wilder and Whittaker families who gained possession in the 19th century. In 1900, a devastating fire tore through the house leaving nothing but the original vaulted crypt. The house was painstakingly rebuilt over the following three years on the exact footprint of the old house. It was purchased in 1924 by the 9th of Westborough, and I hope I've pronounced that right. The family spent the next 60 years here with their families enjoying all the estate and landscape had to offer. In 1983, the 10th Earl of Bespara made the decision to give Stansted Park the Arboretum, and I hope I've pronounced that right as well, I'm sorry if I haven't, his family, home, and its beautiful content to the public. Stansted Park Foundation was set up as a charitable trust charged with the preservation of the estate for the benefit of the nation. Today is adorned with the Ponsonby family portraits and possessions, as well as original furniture, pictures uh, and fittings. The house has one of Britain's best examples of life below stairs with room upon room as if it had been in the house's heyday. In addition to the mansion, Stansted Park also has a private chapel which has a unique colourful history of its own. This elegant Regency chapel stands on the site of the first great house reuses some of its 15th century masonry and looks. The chapel's unique east window illustrations the wish of its founder. 
Lewis Way to reunite the Jewish and Christian faiths. Today, visitors to the estate can enjoy seasonal tours of this splendid mansion. The public has free access to the walled garden with, the tea, with its tea rooms, farm shop, garden centre, maze and miniature railway. The grounds offer wonderful country walks through the woods and avenues of the magnificent parkland between 8am and 6pm. So today we are hoping to be covering the following, fingers crossed, see how things go as I've explained at the beginning, Stansted House, the Pavilion Tea Room, Stansted Park Farm, the Shop, Stansted Park and Garden Centre, Stansted Park Light Railway, I'm not 100% sure if that's running at the moment because of the season and the Stansted Maze and Play Area. Again, I know the maze, I think, is out of action because of COVID and that may apply to the play area. So we'll see how things go. Things may change, we don't know, but let's first visit here. So we'll see how it goes. And the Pottery Studio and the Abortium and the Dutch Garden Stansted Park Bookshop. So we have a lot to do and cover, so we're going to make a start. And obviously we will be covering how Scooter gets on, accessibility. Um, when we arrived here, there is uh, the path leading up to the tea room. It's all stony, but the scooter did manage it okay. I'd say in a wheelchair you'd be okay, but it may be a bit harder to push because it's gravel. But again, we'll be covering that and showing pictures and short films of what it's all like. So, I hope you enjoy and let's go. So we have stopped at the Stansted Park Light Railway. Now, as I was saying at the start, I wasn't sure if it was open or not, and I, it's not, it's shut, and I think that's because it's out of season time, because we're in September at the moment. But we have found the little crossing, so we thought we'd stop here and tell you a little bit about it, which we have quoted from the website to give you the right information. Stansted Park Light Railway is seven and a quarter gauge railway set in the idyllic grounds of Stansted House. Operated by volunteers, the railway is open on Wednesday and Saturday between the hours of 10.30 and 12 o'clock with the last train leaving at 15.45, weather and staff permitting. Train times may have to be adjusted for maintenance and operating conditions as necessary since its opening in 2005. Major improvements have taken place to the track, station, layout and facilities for, to create a splendid half mile circuit that provides enjoyment for all ages. Um, and as you can see, it's a real shame we can't go in and have a little nosy, but I think you can see it behind me, it looks quite sweet. Um, and it's such a shame we can't go on it, but it's unfortunate, but at least we do get to share a little bit about it. Okay, so we are going to carry on Hannah Potter. I'm going to go sit back on the scooter before um, I fall down, because I hurt a little bit. And uh, we're going to find the next thing to talk about. Let's go. Hello. That's again. I'm standing again. So, just firstly, the scooter's doing really well getting around here. It's quite accessible. So, um, as you can see, we've got Stansted House behind us. Quite excited about going in there, but before we go in, for the house access, 
there is a, a sign saying uh, for easier access please call this number which we've taken a photo of um, so they can give you an easier way to get to the house so I just thought I'd share that with you before we go in uh, we are going to show you some we're going to share with you some parts of the house as we go around I'm also going to quickly share a small bit of information about the house before we start which I've quoted from the website so I give you the right information so in 1983 the 10th Earl of Bosenbrough gave Sandstead Park his family home its beautiful contents and the Adoretum, I'm sorry if I've said that wrong, to the public. Visitors can explore the state rooms that are furnished as though Temp Earl was still at home, giving you a real sense of belonging era, including the extensive servants' quarters below stairs. The history of the house and the family are brought to life by knowledgeable and a friend and friendly guys who will assist you throughout your visit uh, there's a little bit of information as i said really looking forward to going in there so we're going to drive well i'm going to drive hubby's going to walk <laughs> and uh, we're going to go and explore so let's go I've stopped at the maze and the play area but it's not open at this time because of safety reasons um, where they've had bad weather and uh, water damage it's just not safe to be open to the public hopefully this will all be fixed in the near future but at current um, we can't go around the maze which I was, got to say, looking forward to because me and Hubby were going to go off different directions see who found the middle first but maybe we can come back one day and do that and that like children so but what I am going to do is share a little bit about the uh, maze with you so when you do come and it is back open you know a little bit about it Sands of Maze in the Lower Wall Garden opened in 2011 as a fun family attraction where adults can be challenged and children can let off steam. It's a circular maze and the admission price includes giant games including chess, Jenga, Connect Four and three holes of miniature golf. Yeah. So there is a little bit of information about maze. Like I said, um, it's not open currently, but hopefully it'll be open very soon. So we have just stopped at the Sandstead Farm Shop. Um, and I just wanted to share a little bit about the shop in case you come here. Yeah. And you fancy popping in and I want to share what they have to offer. The Sandstead Farm Shop stocks the finest food and drink from over 100 Sussex and Hampshire artisan producers with a full butchery counter of local game and meat, a deli brimming with homemade pastries and award winning cheeses. It's a spectacular destination to enjoy your food off the South Downs and Coast. And we're just going to go in there and hopefully be able to share a little bit of what's in there. Okay, let's go. We have 
stopped at the Pavilion Tea Room. Now, we're not going to go too close or show you inside too much because it is absolutely heaving. The Pavilion Tea Room, hidden within 1800 acres of ancient woodland on the Hampshire and West Sussex border, Stansted Park, with its stunning stately home and forest is a wonderful setting for family and friends to gather. In the heart of the walled garden is a beautiful restored Victorian glass house which now houses the pavilion tea rooms. Yeah we just wanted to stop here really and just share a little bit about plus I wanted to stop here because we're going to get coffee in a minute because we need a coffee break, very important. So we are going to go have a break and then we will be back with you. Um, and there's also toilets here, uh, literally just around the corner, just in case you were wondering. Um, so as we found it, I thought we'd stop and share a bit about it. Um, I have quoted it from their website to give you the right information. So the Pottery Studio is a working pottery in the grounds of the Sandstead House. Thrown on the pottery's will, the workshop takes about two hours and students will be guided through the preparations and frame process to produce a range of pot shapes. Students should be able to make between four and six pots each during the session. It's pretty cool, isn't it? So I just wanted to share that little bit of information and show you the re-sweet. Um, and it's obviously not open, but um, it's really cute and just want to share it with you. So we're going to carry on. Hello, so we have come to the end of the day. It has been a long but amazing day. It really has. And we have enjoyed every minute of it. We hope that you have enjoyed our little film. They have got lots of different things here to see and interact with and is mostly accessible apart from one area that is probably not accessible because there's a few steps apart from that they're amazing they got little lifts and one of the lifts i'm not gonna lie could be dated from maybe from titanic period not gonna let you know too much about that because we've got to leave some secrets for you guys to find but if you haven't been here even if you have been here definitely come and visit it's so good and it's um as you've seen my booty scooter friendly wheelchair friendly uh there are areas for you to run around if you're a child or even if you're an adult it doesn't matter and there's interactions there's little things that you can uh uh, when you go around the house where you've got fine things with little binoculars it's so cool it's amazing it's so so good um and i hope that you come here and have a good old visit it is so worth the visit you spend all day here i reckon um for a picnic or get something from the tea rooms a lovely food here really yummy tea and cake yum 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 we enjoyed that thank you very much so we've come to the end of the day and thank you for joining us we'd like to say a massive massive thank you to Sandstead Park for letting us come along today to share with others what to expect while visiting um, and let us know if you have been here and what you thought of it leave comments down below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as that will really help support what we are doing um, another thing that I do want to say um, is that if you are disabled and you do have any questions, just call them up. They're a really friendly team. Um, 
the volunteers are lovely, all staff are lovely here. Just go up to them, ask them, or call them before you come, it doesn't matter, or send them an email. They're really lovely, easy to talk to, and they'll do everything they can to help you as much as you know they're able to. So I just wanted to share that as well. So a massive, massive thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, that really helps you. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to come and visit, definitely. And a big thank you to Hubby for coming along doing the filming and pushing me in the wheelchair when we transferred, which you will see in a video that you've just watched, of course. See, it's going a long day, it's going a long day. Oh, tiring. Okay, so thank you again for watching and we'll see you very, very soon. Lots of love and kisses. Bye for now.